The iPad Air 4 has a lot going for it. It has a new pro-like design, a larger screen with smaller bezels, and a new power button with Touch ID. This iPad is fantastic as it is, but there's a few accessories that you can add to get even more out of this iPad. Hey, my name is Jerry, and this new iPad Air is a great iPad. Well, I think all iPads are great in my opinion, but over the last four years, their utility has really increased and you can do so much more with them than you could before. No longer are these devices built just for playing some basic iPad games and watching Netflix. One of the first things you may wanna get is a case of some kind. And I've got this Apple Smartfolio case for the iPad Air 4. This just happens to be the pink citrus case for the iPad Air 4, and I think it looks really nice with the green. And you may be wondering, but no, this iPad is not mine. I just get to review and test it before it goes back to its real owner. But still, these colors look pretty good, even if they're not the colors I would choose for me. Unlike the previous smart covers that just snapped to the side of the iPad and flipped over to protect the screen, these smart folios flip fully open and the iPad goes inside to protect the back as well as the front. And it looks really nice and feels really nice. It's got that soft touch feel like the Apple silicone cases, but I like it a lot and especially that contrast with the color. It can of course also do that whole threefold thing like this so you can prop it up to watch a movie or whatever, or you can lay it down like this for, I guess, a typing experience if you like typing on the iPad. But if you really wanna type with an iPad, I have a couple of better options. The one I would recommend is the iPad Magic Keyboard. I have plenty of videos explaining all of the benefits of the iPad Magic Keyboard for iPad, and I love this thing. This device transforms the iPad Pro and now an iPad Air into a real productivity device. I don't have an 11 inch version of this iPad Magic Keyboard because this is not my iPad, but if I did get an 11 inch iPad, the iPad Magic Keyboard would be one of the first things I went out and bought for it. It has the cool floating design, backlit scissor switch keys, and a glass trackpad that you can click anywhere. And that's awesome because of the mouse support that was added to iPad OS earlier this year. The downside to the iPad Magic Keyboard, of course, is the cost at $300 for the 11 inch version. If $300 is hard to swallow for a keyboard case, and I think for a lot of people it is, there's also the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio, which they introduced with the 2018 iPads Pro and is now compatible with the iPad Air 4. This keyboard case has the same footprint as the iPad Magic Keyboard, but instead of the cool floating design, you have two set positions to set the iPad at. This case is much lighter than the iPad Magic Keyboard and it has kind of a fabric covering on the keys, which are not backlit. I really liked this case until the Magic Keyboard was announced, but it's still a very good typing experience, but of course, no trackpad. So if you decide to save a bit of money and go with the Smart Keyboard Folio over the iPad Magic Keyboard, you could use some of that money towards something else like the Magic Trackpad 2 or the Magic Mouse 2 and use that for when you want a more desktop-like experience. I like both of these devices a lot. The Magic Trackpad 2 is a huge trackpad with plenty of room for swiping and scrolling and gestures. This is a forced touch trackpad, so you can press anywhere you want on the trackpad and it will give you haptic feedback to simulate a click. I think the iPad Magic Trackpad is a great way to navigate around the iPad because you can use two fingers to swipe down and search from the home screen. Or if you're in an app, you can use three fingers to go home. You can use three fingers to get to the multitasking window and many more. Using a trackpad is a great way to interact with the iPad. You can also use the Magic Mouse too, which I find better when doing a lot of text editing. I have always preferred a mouse to a trackpad when editing text because I find that it's more precise and I don't need to work as hard to make sure that the cursor is in the exact right spot when I need it to be. And just like on the Mac, the top surface of the Magic Mouse 2 is touch sensitive, which is great for scrolling and swiping. And I think that Apple's inertial scrolling on iOS is better than on a Mac. And I mean, there's no comparison with a Windows device, but I digress. My only issue with the Magic Mouse on iPad is that you can't do as much as you can with the trackpad. There is no gesture to go home or get to multitasking. And these are just two options for external mice that you can add to an iPad. You can also get almost any other Bluetooth mouse and even customize the buttons to do different things. I made a video about that, which you can watch right up here and I'll drop it in the description right down there. Next is something I have added to all of my devices over the last year, and that is this iCare's matte screen film protector thing. These films are anti-glare and help protect against fingerprints. The install process is pretty simple. 
First, you clean the screen with the included wipes. Then, align the protector and hold onto it so it doesn't move. Place stickers at the Face ID end to act as hinges and wrap them around the edge. Use a lift sticker to use as a handle to raise the film. Remove the back plastic and carefully apply it back to the screen. There's going to be some bubbles, but if you're happy with the alignment, you can then remove the hinge sticker and remove the top layer of plastic. Use the microfiber and squeegee to push bubbles out to the sides. You may see some specks of dust underneath the screen or you know, more than a few. If you do have some specks of dust under the screen, use a sticker to raise the edge and then you can use one of the dust stickers to remove specks of dust. When done, it should look like this. The benefit of this anti-glare film is that I can now use the iPad in a very bright location like outside or in a bright room and not just see a reflection of myself staring back at me or not have the screen drowned out by bright light. I also find that the matte film is much easier to clean than the glass itself. One of the big benefits of the new iPad Air 4 is the addition of USB-C. This allows for many other accessories that can increase the usability of the iPad Air. Now you can connect things directly to the iPad like cameras for transferring photos and videos using a USB-C cable or a USB-A to USB-C adapter like this. For an even faster transfer from a camera, you can use a USB-C to SD card reader like this Kokaka reader that has a built-in USB-C port. You can even use a USB-C hub like this that has all of the ports that you might need for USB drives, SD cards, even Ethernet, and video out so you can connect your iPad to an external monitor. If you're a creative person who uses the iPad for things like CAD drawings, Photoshop, or even video editing, you probably know how it can be a pain in the butt to move very large files from or to the iPad. Sure, there's AirDrop, which works great for smaller files, but it's not always 100% reliable. Now you can connect a solid state drive directly to the iPad using USB-C. I have this one terabyte Samsung T7 drive formatted with APFS. Copying a 1.11 gigabyte file to the iPad Air took about five seconds or around 220 megabytes per second. Copying the same file back from the iPad to the SSD took between seven and eight seconds and was about 150 megabytes per second. Next up for the creative types is the Apple Pencil 2. Unlike the original Apple Pencil, this one snaps to the side magnetically to charge and pair. I'm not a huge Apple Pencil user, but I do fidget with it and play with it from time to time and take drawings for work notes. With Scribble in iOS 14, you can now use the Apple Pencil to write in any text field. So if you are a pencil user who draws a lot or takes handwritten notes, you can actually just keep the pencil in your hand and no longer need to put it down when you need to do something that's not creative. If you like to play games on the iPad, you may want to get a gamepad. Pretty much all of Apple Arcade games have gamepad support and many third parties are adding it. I'm not a big gamer anymore, but when I do play games, I prefer to have a physical controller and now you can pair Xbox or PlayStation controllers directly to iOS. Last on my list is AirPods. Ever since I got my first pair in 2017, they are always, always in my pocket. They are incredibly small and lightweight and so convenient to just always have with you. No matter what I'm doing from Zoom work calls to watching movie to playing games, these fit the bill iOS 14 added fast switching for AirPods, so now moving from one device to another is pretty much instant. So if you're listening to a podcast on your phone, but you pull up your iPad to watch YouTube, the AirPods will automatically switch to the iPad, like this. Needless to say, the beast was... So these are some of my favorite accessories for iPad. So you can get so much more done with an iPad by adding a keyboard and a mouse. The USB-C port adds expansion possibilities and faster ways to transfer files. AirPods and gamepads can bump up the level of entertainment you get from the iPad, while the iCare screen protector keeps your screen mint and makes it easier to see in bright environments. I would love to hear what accessories you use with your iPad or what you think about the iPad Air 4, so let me know below. If you're interested in seeing how you can make the iPad more like a laptop, you should check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.